my YouTube gang, what's up, it's Johnny Varsity again, and today we'll take a fresh look at Zionism, religion, statistics, history, and more. While the creepiest guy on YouTube tries to circumvent intelligence, and a good place to start will be the we are not anti-Semitic automatic defense line used by anti-Zionists that will tell you that you cannot conflate Zionism and Judaism. A statement usually made right before they will tell you that all of Zionism's claims are totally based on the religious rhetoric. So, is Zionism based on religion or not? Well, Zionism is a 19th century national movement of the Jews, which, just like its counterparts, basically claims that the Jewish nation has a right for self-determination and a right to self-rule in its own historic homeland. And just like its periodic counterparts, it's not religious by fucking definition. But in fact, it's actually enough to look at Zionism's forefathers. After all, if Zionism is totally based on the religious rhetoric, then it would follow that its forefathers were religious. So let's take Theodor Herzl, you know, the guy who practically invented Zionism, who prior to understanding that anti-Semitism is not just your everyday religious hatred thing, actually contemplated the idea of a mass conversion of Jews into Christianity as a way to deal with anti-Semitism. I mean, heck, the guy didn't even circumcise his own fucking son. Not exactly your good old Jewish boy. Apart from that, keep in mind that most early Zionists were ungodly socialists and communists. And while their like-minded friends in Albania, Afghanistan, Cambodia, China, and the Soviet Union basically massacred religion, in Israel they established the communal village system known as the kibbutz, where you could actually have the traditional kiddush on Friday and have pork on the table at the same fucking kiddush. Not exactly your everyday religious Jewish custom. Now, being both both atheistic and the controlling stream in Zionism had pushed Zionists at odds with the black hat weird hair thingy rabbis. For instance, over the inclusion of the word God in the Israeli Declaration of Independence. By the way, there is no mention of fucking God in the Israeli Declaration of Independence. Guess why? But atheism didn't only rule the left side of the map, and like his opponents Ben Gurion and Max Nordo, the guy who established right-wing Zionism was actually anti-religion. And of course you shouldn't forget the two guys who basically led all of Israel's greatest wars, Moshe Dayan and Yitzhak Rabin, both of them atheists, and the latter was actually assassinated by a religious dude. Again, guess why? So I guess that lesson number one is that indeed you cannot conflate the Jewish national movement known as Zionism with the Jewish mythology called Judaism. Which, by the way, just like the Irish and Finnish mythologies, plays an integral part in building the core national identity of these three great nations and others. And it doesn't matter whether you believe in the magical Sky Daddy or not. But then Creepy Boy poops it all up when he adds Or Jewishness. Which to me suggests that basically he only has a brainstem. After all, saying that you cannot conflate Zionism with Jewishness makes as much sense as saying that you cannot conflate the Tunisian national movement with being fucking Tunisian. But in any case, right after telling us that Zionism and Judaism cannot be conflated, Creepy Boy's single neuron goes on a rather curious rant about the core founder in Judaism, you know, Jacob, who is nothing but a deceiver. He lies to his blind father. He tricks his brother who is starving out of his birthright. He goes and works and tricks his employer. It's his daughter that isn't good enough and sleeps with his other slave. He's got two slaves, two wives, working his wife's younger sister. Which climaxes to this medieval conclusion. From that bloodline come the Israelites and the 12 tribes and the rest of the rhetoric. Which he then dismisses because after all, none of this is historically true. This is all religious history. Which to me suggests that Zionists need not worry because after all, you cannot conflict Zionism and Judaism or Jewishness. <sighs> Well, I guess you cannot expect much meaningful brain activity from a frequent guest on the Iranian state-owned Press TV and the Russian state-owned RT who says this about the privately held media outlets in the West. State-run propaganda. Speaking of propaganda, what I find most interesting about the petrodollar finance Islamic extremist propaganda machine is the ease in which they manage to circumvent intelligence by appealing to emotional righteous indignation. To the point that even people who are not full-blown David Duke assholes type end up discriminating against Jews in very much the same way. 
For instance, take the millions of refugees that you hear about all the time, who in fact aren't real refugees, but rather the descendants of the Arab refugees from the 1947-49 war in the land of Israel, which basically means that current Palestinians claim rights to the land of Israel because their ancestors once used to live here, which I find extremely close to the Zionist claim. Now tell me honestly, if you support the Palestinian claim while denying the Zionist claim, isn't that discriminating against Jews? Well, luckily enough, there's an anti-Zionist workaround for that. All you need to do is put air quotes when you're saying European Jews. Now, at least for now, with our current understanding of genetics, the scientific consensus is that most European Jews did in fact originate from the Levant area. This is why if you look at many European Jews, you find very similar characteristics to, for instance, Syrians, Lebanese, etc. Now, indeed, this consensus might be the result of science is becoming too isolated from other branches of science. But even if it's not true, and European Jews have no blood connection at all to the land of Israel, saying that Palestinians are ind indigenous to Palestine is a true statement as saying that Italians are indigenous to fucking England, as suggested by early accounts of people visiting the southern district of Ottoman Syria, the most prominent family names of Palestinians, and if that's not enough, the words of this senior Hamas member. But even better, between 1948 and 51, more than 50% of the immigration to Israel were actually Arab Jews that were ethnically cleansed from Muslim countries around Israel. And their descendants today constitute around a half of Israeli population altogether. And mind you, these Arab Jews are not. European Jews and being descendants of refugees, I would imagine that they would have the same rights as Palestinians, won't you? Or how about this unique logic? Around 20% of Israeli citizens today are in fact not Jewish but Arabs, which creepy boy's lonely neuron somehow manages to translate to Zionists want Israel only for their kind of people and no one else, and they must live on it exclusively and drive out all the other non-believers. While Palestinians will boldly tell you that they can't even live with a single Jew in what might become their side of Jerusalem, or in fact in what would one day might become Palestine. Well, maybe Palestinians think that Palestine is for their kind of people and no one else, and they must live on it exclusively and drive out all the other non-believers. And funnier still, if Israel would have expelled all the other non-believers, well, the result would be more than half of the Jews in Israel would have to leave. After all, only a quarter of Israeli Jews are actually rabbi-controlled, God-fearing, funny-dressing, religious Jews. And from that quarter, some are actually anti-Zionists, which brings brings me to my final point. Everybody knows that you can't get religious factions to ever agree upon anything because they come from positions of irrationality and that is why you can never find a compromise or get anything done. And that religious crazies you can depend on for one thing, conflict. Now, given that the forefathers of Zionism are these guys, while the fathers of Palestinian nationalism are one, a Nazi officer religious Muslim cleric, and two, a member of the Muslim Brotherhood, and that actual religious Jews constitute only around a quarter of Israeli Jews, while at the same time, 99 percent of Palestinians believe in God and Mohammed, and 85 percent of them say that religion is central to their lives, a religion that by the way calls us Jews the sons of apes and pigs, and is pretty much okay with killing us, then how the fuck, given these statistics, is Israel the Nazi religious entity in this story, you fucking creepy douchebag? Shit, man. Well, in any case, in the next video, we're going to explore some ancient Israelite history, archaeology, the origins of Jewish mythology, and many other interesting subjects going back around 3,000 years and so. So, see you there, bitches. And don't forget, I love you all. Even if you're anti-Israeli, I don't care.